today's reaction is Friedel Craft reaction. We start with toluene as our aromatic substrate. The first step of the reaction is to combine acetyl chloride, which I weighed 4.2 grams, and anhydrous aluminum chloride, which is about 7 grams. These two combine in presence of dichloromethane as your solvent to form the acetyl cation. The next step, we start adding the toluene mixture, and then we produce two possible products, the para product as your major product, and the ortho product as your minor product. So due to steric hindrance, the para product is your major product. And we also produce HCl gas, which is trapped with a glass funnel inverted on some water. So let's get started with the reaction, and at the end of the reaction, we'll get the mass of the product. So I'm going to quickly pack a drying tube. That's your drying tube. You need a cotton ball, and I'm going to split it into two pieces. And then one of them goes here. I'm going to pack some anhydrous calcium chloride. So that's your drying tube. It's ready to be assembled with the glasswares. So I'm going to quickly assemble the glasswares before I start. We are using a 500 milliliter round bottom flask which has three neck. I'm inserting a, I'm putting in a stir bar and then I'm going to clamp it here. Put in my condenser. Put my separatory funnel with the drying tube. So the drying tube goes on top. The separatory funnel goes on a second neck. And the third neck, I'm just going to stopper it with a stopper glass stopper. This is a thermometer adapter. I'm go using a glass insert. Goes in here. And then a rubber tubing goes here. So this thermometer adapter goes on top of the condenser. And the other end would have a glass funnel. This I'm going to clamp right here. The funnel goes in the beaker with some water to catch any HCl vapors escaping from the reaction. The funnel should be one or two centimeters above the water. So here's my overall setup. There's no chemicals in here yet. This is a bath for ice. I will put some ice in here in a few minutes. So let's get all the chemicals ready, weighed to start the reaction. So this is my seven grams of anhydrous aluminum chloride. With the use of a dry funnel, I'm going to quickly transfer into the round bottom flask. And I'm going to rinse the remaining aluminum chloride with 13 ml of dichloromethane and then transfer everything into the round bottom flask. I'll remove the funnel, cap it, with the stopper. Here's my 4.7 grams of acetyl chloride. It's a liquid. I'm going to add 8 milliliters of dichloromethane. So I'm going to transfer this acetyl chloride dichloromethane mixture into the separatory funnel and replace the drying tube immediately. I'm going to place some ice in my bath. And I'm going to start stirring the solution. We will stir until a fine suspension of aluminum chloride with the dichloromethane solvent has been formed and then start adding the acetyl chloride solution dropwise through the separatory funnel. We'll go ahead and start adding the acetyl chloride mixture from the separatory funnel or the addition funnel slowly. So the addition should be dropwise and it should take about 15 minutes for the complete addition. The reaction is pretty exothermic so that's the reason we need to place an ice bath to cool the reaction mixture. The addition of acetyl chloride solution is complete. Here's my 3.82 grams of 
toluene with 5 ml of dichloromethane. This mixture goes in the separatory funnel. So we'll start adding toluene slowly so that it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to add. If you see closely, HCl gas is coming through the funnel and that is what the trap is for. The addition of the toluene solution is complete. We are going to stop the stirring and take out the round bottom flask. So here's a product mixture. Here's my 25 grams of ice. I'm going to add about 13 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Transfer the reaction mixture with the stir bar into the beaker. I will let it stir for about 15 minutes. Transfer the product into a separatory funnel. We can clearly see two layers. We are going to transfer the bottom layer, which is the dichloromethane layer, into a clean or mild flask. To the top layer, we're going to add 15 ml of dichloromethane. Mix. And then uncap and let it separate into two layers. Again, we see two layers. I'm going to transfer the bottom layer into the same on my flask where I had my first extract. The top layer is a discard. The dichloromethane layer, which contains our product, goes back to the separatory funnel. And I'm going to add 25 ml of saturated bicarbonate solution. This should neutralize any excess acid that's present with the product. Give it a mix. And then uncap and let it stand to separate into two layers. The bottom layer goes into a clean urn mass flask. The top layer is a discard. To the dichloromethane layer, I'm going to add about 2 grams of sodium sulfate and hydrous sodium sulfate. And then give it a mix, let it stand for a few minutes. I'm going to quickly set up a simple distillation. Here's my simple distillation setup. I'm going to quickly transfer my dichloromethane layer from here to the round bottom flask. So tilt the urn mat flask, transfer just the liquid onto the round bottom flask. I have put my collection flask, which is a 50 ml round bottom flask, 
This will collect the dichloromethane that will distill out and it will be discarded. Product would remain in the 100 ml round bottom flask. Let's go ahead and start heating. Make sure the water is turned on. We have started collecting our distillate, which is the dichloromethane. We'll go ahead and turn off the heating. And bring the mantle down so the setup cools down. So it has cooled down. We'll go ahead and dismantle the setup. Now we'll go ahead and weigh this. End of the reaction, we weighed our product after we had done a simple distillation. The 100 ml round bottom flask used in the simple distillation weighed 77.42 grams. And at the end of the simple distillation, it had the product. And once we cool it, we weighed it. It came around 82.10 grams. So these two numbers should help you find the mass of the product and then find the percent yield for the Friddle-Craft reaction today.